Usually when people talk about the first steps in the level design process, uh, people talk about gathering reference images and sketching out layouts on paper. But for me personally, it's rarely either of these. So in this video, I wanna show you what I do instead. I'm obviously not saying that this is the only or the best way to start designing your levels. As always, it's different for every game and it's about whatever works for you and your team. But to me, level design is about creating an experience. And before I can decide how that experience should look or what kind of layout it should take place in, I need to figure out what that experience actually is. So rather than starting with pictures or sketches, um, my process starts in Notepad. I'm just writing ideas down and figuring out what I'm gonna do in a text file. So in this video, I'm gonna show you that process while I design a short but fully playable original Half-Life 2 level. Apart from a basic theme for the level, which is escape, I'm gonna improvise the whole thing from start to finish and talk you through my thinking throughout the entire process. And then for future videos, I'm gonna jump into Half-Life 2's level editor, Hammer, and actually make the level for real and see how that goes. But for now, this is all about me showing you how I design the level in text first, to come up with all the ideas and plan a kind of structure for the player experience. So let's jump into Notepad. Before we jump into the process itself, I wanna skip ahead and show you the final result, which is this. Um, there's about, I think, five sections in this. The first one is goals, uh, what I'm trying to do, why and how. The second one is elements, basically listing the features of Half-Life 2 that I have to play with. The third one is gameplay beats and the kind of styles of gameplay that I want in the level in general. The next one is questions that come up, um, some of which I answer during this process and some of which remain open questions by the end of it for me to kind of think about as I start making the level. And finally, there is the sequence. This is the kind of plan for the level itself and it dictates the kind of the structure and the sequence of the player experience that I intend to make. So that's an overview of what we're working towards. Let's actually start designing the level. So here we are in Notepad and I'm gonna write goals. So I wanna make a Half-Life 2 level. Why do I wanna make it? I want to uh, make something that anyone can make as a portfolio piece. Uh, I want it to show textbook level design skills like 3D layout design, gameplay uh, ideas and implementation, uh, scripting, etc., etc. right? So I want it to show some kind of textbook skills that people want to show in their portfolio work. So what else do I know? I want to keep the level short. Three minutes. Right, that sounds short, but it should be short because it doesn't need to be long. And the longer it is, the less likely it is that you'll finish it and the lower quality it will be, frankly. So it's short level and, oh, yeah, that was it. So the one thing I have decided is that the theme is going to be escape the combine, right? The reason I like this theme is because it's simple, simple to understand, simple to kind of communicate to the player but it's also very scalable in the sense that I can, this um, level could be as simple or complex or small or big as, as I want and as I'm able to make. So it's a very flexible but effective theme. Once you've got a sense of our goal and why we're trying to do this, with that stuff in mind, what's next? The next thing I like to think about is what I think of as elements. And I'll skip ahead a bit and write sequence. The elements are about what do I have at my disposal to do this thing, to achieve these goals? And so what does Half-Life 2 give me? Half-Life 2 gives me um, combined metro police and soldiers, etc. Uh, there's the head crabs and zombies and that, and that whole side of things, because they're like a different faction who the combined fight also. Um, I love that Half-Life 2 has AI civilians who, can, who you can rescue, uh, fight alongside heal the player, etc. There's other things like, uh, you know, explosive barrels. I don't know, it's a simple example. Combined force fields, uh, let me think of vehicles, car, hovercraft, etc. Combined helicopter, Strider, uh, Alex, and other weapons, gravity gun, crossbow, shotgun, SMG, etc. So I just want a sense of what I've got to play with and particularly what I like here is the first three that I wrote down I think are really, you know, it's kind of textbook Half-Life 2 but also really great kind of basic building blocks for an interesting level because I love AI stuff. I like rescuing 
other characters. I like the fact that they can fight alongside me. I like the fact that they can die alongside me. And, you know, there's, there's a bit of drama there. So there's, there's a basic list of elements. There's definitely not all of the elements in Half-Life 2. But my point here is that I literally list out what is at my disposal to make the level that I'm trying to make. And the sequence is where we really start actually designing the level. I'll note down ideas that feel important or inevitable to go in the level, and then I'll move them around to get a sense of sequence and how they could all fit together. So the theme is escape. Obviously the level ends with... Oh, ends... with player escaping, right? Level starts with player wondering where they are. Realizing they, they've been captured. Feeling stuck in a room. Yeah, you know, I'm just writing down kind of natural building blocks for this kind of for this kind of theme, just to get something going. So, if we're making a, le a level about escaping being captured, what kind of narrative beats and kind of internal beats does the player have? Uh, like I said, they start wondering where they are. They realize they're captured. We want to sell the idea that they're captured. So I'm really writing down and kind of plotting out a thought process uh, for the player because this is the experience, right? The player starts to wonder how they can escape. Initially feels stuck. But then there's there are a couple of clues on how they could escape the room they're in. I like, let me think, I like the idea, if you're stuck in a room, I like the idea that um, maybe player can see a guard through a, a hole in the door to their cell. I like this because it gives a sense of uh, stealth as well. If you know that you're captured and there's an enemy outside the room, you've got to figure a way out, but you've also got to decide whether or not, you've got to figure out if you can do it without alerting that guard who's outside the room. Another section that I have is questions, right? Because as I'm as I'm thinking about this, the idea for this level, there are questions to ask, like um, how how could player escape the room, the first room, the player in a cell, wondering where they are, right? Let's say, given that we mentioned in the elements, this is where the elements list comes in. I wrote down vehicles and I meant I mentioned the car and the hovercraft. I've never actually used those before, but I think that would be pretty cool for an escape level. So let's say either the car or the hovercraft, at some point in the level, um, player, uh, what is it? Player spots a potential escape vehicle. Right. And this would actually be cool Particularly as it's a short level, I think it would be cool if the player does this in the first room. So maybe they're locked in a room with a door that they can see the guard through, but there's a window where they can see outside and get a sense of where they are. And then it would be cool if they saw the escape vehicle at the very beginning of the level. So realizing they've been captured, player starts to wonder how they can escape, initially feels stuck. Uh, player spots a potential escape vehicle somewhere outside through a window because that gives them a high level plan, a high level kind of uh, goal to hit. And then they think about the low level goal, the, the moment to moment goal of how do I escape this room? And then maybe player can see a guard through the hole in the door in their cell. But then there are a couple of clues on how they escape the room they're in. How could the player escape the first room? Crowbar, vent. Uh, you know, it's conceivable that there could be a crowbar somewhere in this room if the player looks around um, and it wouldn't seem too ridiculous and unrealistic. And then they could use that crowbar to break a vent and escape and create a way to way out. Um, what else do I know? Uh, gameplay beats, right? I want some sense of stealth, sneakiness. I won't say stealth, but sneakiness. Starting with just a melee weapon because it's the only silenced weapon, I think, in Half-Life 2. I don't know if the crossbow is. So I like the idea that there's a, a first act or a first part of the level where the player is quiet and they're thinking about it. They have to be quiet because they're trying to break out and it helps sell that theme. And then gets a bigger weapon, gets a proper weapon, like a shotgun. 
shotgun. No, oh, let's say pistol first. Shotgun. That's a cooler weapon. RPG, graphic gun, all the usual stuff, right? Just that basic structure of the level where the player gets cooler stuff as they go on. Big fight. I don't know how big. Big ish. <laughs> big fight to get outside to the vehicle, to the escape vehicle. The reason this is separate to sequence is because I'm not thinking about the order here, but I'm just thinking about what kinds of gameplay do I want here? Sneakiness with nearby guards, watching, being quiet, finding clever routes, etc. Um, I don't want the level to be totally nil, uh, linear. Some degree of non-linearity. Escape through vents. Let's say multiple entrances from vents into different rooms, into a few different rooms. So I want that to be non-linearity here and the player thinking about which, what they want to do first. Uh, recovering objective to cover Gordon suit, which is a nice Half-Life 2-ish thing. And it's the kind of thing that might take off Gordon if they captured him. Um, what game, what gameplay abilities do we get with Gordon's suit? One is that you can sprint, health UI, there's enough on the flashlight. So it, it, with the flashlight there, it would be interesting to have a dark room that requires the flashlight. It'd be interesting, given that the, if we have it as an objective to recover Gordon's suit, and we know that one of the abilities that you get with Gordon's suit is a flashlight, it would be interesting to have a dark room uh, in this level that the player needs to kind of get something out of, and they can only do this with the flashlight. If it works, I think that's quite a nice little idea, and maybe I'll talk more about why later. Uh, okay, so Gordon's suit gives gives you the flashlight. Uh, this enables player to find, use, do something in a, a dark room, which enables them to break outside. So one reason why I think about sequence in level design is because it's really important, right? Like just now I've just written down a beat where the Getting the suit gives you the flashlight, which enables the player to you to to get some use out of the, the room that's really dark. If you've seen my uh, video about my arcane level design test, I talk about the idea of showing the, the door before the key. And in this case, I think the ideal way of playing through this is finding the dark room first when you can't use it because you don't have a flashlight, and then being kind of excited when you do get the flashlight and suddenly you can go back to the dark room and you know see it in a different way. So if that's the case, then before the player gets the flashlight to be able to use the dark room, we want the player to see the dark room. And we want that in the sequence of events, in the kind of ideal sequence of events. Player encounters very dark room, which feels, I don't know, feels challenging, interesting to navigate in the dark. Maybe player um, uses, what's the, what are they called? Uses rotating valve door thing to open garage doors, which lets them outside. So maybe that's what's in the dark room. There's a valve on a wall, which opens a door, which you can't see unless you've got the flashlight. The thing is though, is that if it's really important that the player can't do that until they've got the, the flashlight, then it's kind of also important that the player doesn't have a gun because a gun is a way of lighting up a room. So there's a question. What weapons and gameplay objects can player have that don't light up the room? Uh, gravity gun, crowbar, crossbow. So this implies that before the player gets the god gets Gordon's suit, player 
requires, requires crossbow, maybe gravity gun. So we want some gameplay with those weapons um, on the way to getting the suit so that the player d still doesn't have guns by this point because then they get the flashlight and that enables them to um, get out basically. And maybe in the dark room, player with flashlight can suddenly see weapons. Then they open up the big door with the valve and a big final fight and she's outside fighting towards the vehicle. Player makes their way to vehicle, jumps in and speeds around, finishing off the last enemies. Player can escape by driving the vehicle over a ramp and smashing through stuff and speeding away. The end. Right, and that's actually a whole level. That's a legit design for a level with a proper sequence that is based on the uh, gameplay beats that we came up with, and you know the element using the elements of the game that we listed at the start, and based on this kind of this list of goals um, that we put at the start. What I've just shown you there, it was a genuine live thought process because I, I, I improvised this all on the spot. Hopefully that shows how logical the initial creative process can be and, in my opinion, should be. Oh, you know what? One thing we didn't include was the uh, AI civilians. Let me think. Let's add those in somewhere. Maybe before final fight, player can rescue AI civs. Uh, multiple entrances from vents into a few different rooms. Player sees captured AI civilians to be rescued. Right? So now I've fitted in the civilians because I think they're cool. Don't think there's anything else that... Uh, we've got a vehicle in there. Maybe the combined force field will be something that in, instead of the valve garage door thing. It's got, we should probably just head, add some headcrabs and zombies in there somehow. Zombies are head crabs somewhere. Head crabs? <laughs> head crabs somewhere. All right, but there we go. That's what I'm going to call my finished uh, level plan. Let's read the cell. Level starts with a player in a cell, wondering where they are. Then they realize they've been captured. Player starts to wonder how they can escape. Initially feels stuck. Because you need to sell these beats, right, to get, this, to, to get the experience across properly. Player spots a potential escape vehicle somewhere. Outside through a window, maybe. Maybe player can see a guard through a hole in the door to their cell. But then there are a couple of clues on how they could escape the room they're in. Maybe they eventually escape through vents. With a crowbar. Maybe. Um, player sees captured AI civilians. This is from sneaking around. Sneaking around in the vents. A choice or two on where to go. Ability to see, uh, scout. Ability to scout the location out. Vents. Metal Gear Solid style. Right, I, I just want to do that. You've got to do that. Player sees captured AI civilians somewhere. Player sees... Sees or encounters a very dark room, which feels challenging and interesting to navigate in the dark. Multiple entrances from vents into a few different rooms. Objective to recover Gordon's suit. Player sees Gordon's suit. We'll do this Half-Life 2 style, which means not using the UI to tell the player what to do. Zombies are headcrabs somewhere. Let's see. Player acquires the crossbow, maybe the gravity gun. Uses them to fight their way to recovering garden suit cool valve music cue for anyone who's not familiar with what i mean here um, in half Life 2 when you put garden suit back on in kleiner's lab they play what i think of as the valve theme tune and it just sounds cool and we're going to do the same thing time to suit up gordon
Golden suit gives you the flashlight, among other things. This enables player to find slash use slash do something in a dark room, which enables them to break outside. Maybe the player uses a rotating valve door thing to open garage doors. In the dark room, player with flashlight can suddenly see weapons. Player can also see a way of progressing outside. Let's say, let's keep that that vague because that might well change. Then they open the big door. This leads to this leads to a bigish final fight with AI sieves alongside player if they've rescued them. Uh, that's better, I think. Big final fight ensues outside, fighting towards the vehicle. Player makes their way to vehicle, jumps in and speeds around, finishing off the last enemies. Player can escape by driving the vehicle over a ramp and smashing through stuff and speeding away. The end. So reading through this keeps proving useful because as I read that out, I realized there's a bit of a problem here. If the player is fighting alongside AI civilians that they've rescued, it seems kind of a douchey move to then jump in a vehicle, Gordon, and then just speed away <laughs> on his own because the civilians won't be able to get into the vehicle. So that brings up a question of, and I'm going to write it down just because it comes in handy. Can we have AI sieves to save if Gordon escapes alone? Maybe we could free them somewhere before finishing. But that's quite a tricky question, which I don't know how to answer yet. But uh, we'll see where this goes anyway when we start making it. But yeah, that's uh, that's the level. To be honest, I wonder if it's a bit too big and when I start making this level, it will be too long. But so long as I catch that early, I can trim the level down and that's not a problem. It's not a bad place to be in. So we've got a fairly solid plan there and it's all just done in a text file because at this point, all I care about is the logic of what I'm trying to do and the structure of the player experience. And even though I want some non-linearity in there, I'm thinking about the general sequence of events and what the player sees and does and experiences. So in the next videos, I'm going to start actually making this level in Half-Life 2 with the Hammer Editor. But I hope you'll stick around for that and that you found this video useful and interesting. Let me know what you think about this creative process or your own creative process in the comments. Cheers for watching.